So the more we look at this series, uh, the longer I think it's actually going to take. So I'm going to try and be as uh, quick as possible going through as much stuff as possible to make sure I don't have 100 videos about making a DNS server. So what we need to do is we need to look at what a DNS request looks like. This is what a DNS query looks like, but it obviously doesn't mean anything like this. Uh, and it means even less because the terminals tried to convert some of the bytes into actual letters. So what we need to do is use Wireshark to actually look at the DNS request. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go to Wireshark and we're going to tell it to start capturing packets again. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up dig, which is this one here, and I'm just going to send another DNS request. You can see dig has just resent the request and I'll just close this now because it'll just time out and it'll keep sending more requests as it has just done. So I've just closed dig to stop it sending more requests and we can just filter these by DNS. So we said DNS server and you can see there's two DNS requests. So this is what a DNS request actually looks like. This is the raw binary that the terminal has tried to convert. If I just show it in hexadecimal format and go back to the server, you can see here there's backslash x01, backslash x00001. These actually match up with Wireshark. So these first two, this lowercase t and the capital P are two bytes that the terminal has incorrectly tried to convert into letters. Which you can see, if I go to the DNS request, if I click this, the DNS request turns blue, and these first two bytes are the uh, lowercase t and the capital P. Then we have 01000001, which is four bytes. If we go back to the terminal, you can see the exact same four bytes. So what a DNS request looks like is this. We have the transaction ID, then we have flags, and we have, we have the number of questions, the number of, re of answers we get back, and we have authority resource records and additional resource records. In this series, to keep things simple, we're not going to be sending authority resource records, and we're not going to be sending additional resource records because we're going to be creating an authoritative DNS server. It's not going to serve requests that it doesn't have the zone files for. It's only going to serve requests from domains that it actually controls to keep things more simple. Here we have the actual question and here we have heiko.org and then we have the type of the request and the class. The class is in, which means internet. There are other classes that work with DNS, but the only one that 99.9% .9 of people ever use is in for internet, which is encoded as a one. Okay, so here we have the header section as it is specified in the RFC. You can see, if we go back to highcode.org, there are headers associated with HTTP requests, and these are the request headers, and these are the response headers. DNS also has headers, and this is the format of a DNS header. If we go back to Wireshark, we can see these headers. Uh, the header is the transaction ID down to the additional resource records. The next part where it says queries, that's part of the body of the request. Uh, but all these up here are headers and if we open this up we can see the flags in more detail and these are part of the header section as well. So you can see it says 0 and it goes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and then it goes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. If you add that up it adds up to 16 and each one of these numbers represents one bit. Uh, so essentially what that means is the transaction ID takes up two bytes of memory. So the transaction ID is this here and that is the very first part of a DNS request and a DNS response. The reason you have a transaction ID is because the DNS server sends you a response to your request. But you don't know if that response is what you actually asked for. You don't know if it's the correct response. So in order to ensure that the uh, response came from the right DNS server, the DNS server has to extract the transaction ID out of the packet it receives from the request and send it back in the response. The transaction ID just ensures that the response that you receive came from the server you requested it from. The next thing we have are flags and you can see here this second line is the flags. The first one is QR, that is if we scroll down here it's a one bit field that specifies whether the message is a query or a response. If it's a query it's a zero, if it's a response it's a one. And if we go to Wireshark that holds true you can see that this is a zero because it is a query. If it was a response, it would be a one. Next is opcode, and you can see opcode is, is encoded using four bits, and essentially we can just send a zero back in this field. We're not gonna be dealing with all this other, uh, the other possibilities to keep things simple. We're just gonna send back a zero. The next is the AA field, which is the authoritative answer, and that'll basically tell dig whenever we send a request to it that the response is authoritative, which means that the DNS server we got the response from is the DNS server that controls the domain name. It's not coming from a third party DNS server. And you can see that takes up one bit. Then you can see there's another one called TC and that stands for truncation. That means if our request was bigger than 512 bytes, 
uh, and for example maybe it got truncated because it was too long then we would say that we truncated it but since we're going to assume all requests are 512 bytes or less we're just going to say that is a zero the rd field is another one bit field that says recursion desired and essentially that is just the client asking the server for if it offers recursion and we're going to say no so we're just going to write a zero for that for recursion available is the next field that's also one bit we're going to say that's a zero this field z that takes up three bits is reserved it's just for future use so we can ignore that we can just set these all to zero and response code is another four bit field that says whether or not the dns query was successful or not and for simplicity we're also just going to be assuming all queries are successful there are response codes if we scroll down here for response code you can see here are the codes that it accepts but we're just going to ignore all those the next one is the question count which is always going to be one because when DNS was first designed, it was designed so that you could have multiple questions per query, but in practice, every single DNS query is one question. So that's always gonna be a one. The answer section can be actually a lot longer because that's up to the DNS server. If there's more than one A record returned for Haiku.org, then there's gonna be more than one answer. It's gonna return all of those records. And that will be answer count, which is actually a bit more complicated than question count because it's not just a static number. The NS count stands for the number of name servers returned. We're not gonna be sending any name servers, so that's always gonna be zero. And the AR count stands for additional records, and we're not gonna be sending any of those either for simplicity. So that's gonna be zero, and that's gonna be zero. And you can see that this is a two byte field. This is also a two byte field, and these four, these four are all two bytes. The ID is two bytes and the flags are two bytes. That adds up to 12 and that means DNS headers are 12 bytes long. So the reason I mentioned DNS headers are 12 bytes long, so I just looked at the video, it's getting a bit long, so I'm gonna come on to this message compression in the next part. So thanks for watching, don't forget to like, comment, favorite, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.